In this video I'm going to share how I made a virtual mold in Blender of a peanut which I then 3D printed and used to cast a positive object. I made this 3D model of a peanut by taking several photos and using a process called photogrammetry. The workflow was documented and is available in the previous video which I'll link to in the information card above. To start with I imported my STL file into Blender and saved the document. Once imported, I then right clicked on the model and selected Set Origin and Geometry to Origin. For this to work, you want to make sure the 3D cursor is on X0, Y0 and Z0, which is a virtual coordinate, and will help with keeping things concentric later. If the cursor isn't where you expect it, you may need to press Shift and S on the keyboard and select Cursor to World Origin before setting the geometry. I then orientated the model so the top of the peanut was facing upwards and the seam intersected with the x-axis. If for some reason the transform tool is not visible, you can select the tiny arrow and pull that outwards. By clicking on the axis letter, the view repositions and I can use the transform tool to make my adjustments. I also changed the scale. The longest dimension of the model peanut is nearly 83 centimeters, and I'm not sure why that is but I'm going to change that to 145 millimeters, which is roughly what size object I'd like to 3D print. I then copied the scale factor over to the different axes. Once I was happy, which took an entire bottle of wine, I pressed Ctrl and A while the peanut was selected and clicked on all transformations to Delta. That sets the current rotation and location position to zero and the scale back to one. This will also save me having to do any maths later if I have to fine adjust anything as well as notice if anything moves out of alignment by accident. Now for some reason the dimensions of the peanut were much bigger than what they should be in real life. And I noticed that if I exported the 3D model from the photogrammetry software, Agisoft, directly into my slicer software, Prusa Slicer, I got this error message and it was roughly half the size that it should have been. If I then rescaled the STL file and exported it, from Prusa Slicer into Blender, the peanut became 40 meters long. It was a giant peanut. This side of things confuses me a little, so I'm just gonna work with what I can see on screen. My mesh is open at the bottom and I will need to close this. But before that, I will make a copy of the model and hide its viewpoint. I may make more copies later as I go along so I can compare processes and easily repeat stages if I need to. Now to close the hole in the mesh, I will use a modifier. While the visible peanut is again selected, I go to the modifier properties and then the add modifier drop down menu and finally remesh. I also toggled off the real time display and render as this slows the process down. And I've already done a trial run of this and I know which settings work. I select sharp and change the depth from four to 11 and the scale to 0 0.99. And as I'm easily impressed, I commit to this by pressing Ctrl C or the drop down arrow and apply. The software does a little processing and the spinning wheel of doom appears, but eventually this will plug any gaps in the model. I can also compare this with my original imported peanut. I suspect there's other ways to do this, so if you know of one, please do share in the comments because this software is very much a massive headache for me. Anyway, moving on, I'm now going to import or create another shape into the scene, which is what I'll subtract the peanut from to create the mold. I press Shift and A and select Mesh and Cylinder. And then use the Transform tools again to change the dimensions to what I require. If these are concentric to one another, when you click between the cylinder and the peanut, the origin should not move. You can compare this between the different axis views. If for some reason your origin is not on the cursor and when you select the two shapes they're not aligned, what you can do is right click, set the origin to the 3D cursor and then geometry to origin. And then control A and location to delta. 
it gets a bit confusing and you may need to repeat your stages to identify where you may have created a problem. I also reposition the cylinder so the base of the peanut intersects with the cylinder and become the opening for pouring in the casting material. Once that's done, I also press Ctrl A while the cylinder is selected and press all transformations to delta. I'm now going to subtract the peanut mesh from the cylinder. I select the cylinder, navigate to modifier properties, add modifier and boolean. I select difference and under object select peanut. To commit to this, I either press Ctrl A or apply in the drop down menu. The spinning wheel of doom appears again and I have to wait. If I hide the peanut and orbit the view to the bottom of the cylinder, you can see the negative space within. The next stage will be to slice the cylinder in half and to do this I begin by pressing Shift and A on the keyboard and selecting Mesh and then Plane. I then transform the plane to a smaller size and rotate it so it intersects along the peanut seam. I can then hide the cylinder from view and reveal the peanut to help me see what I'm actually doing. I duplicate the cylinder and use the boolean modifier to split the mesh along that plane. I use difference on one and intersect on the other to create the two halves. You can split the virtual mould into as many segments as you need and even add additional pouring holes or vents to let air escape if necessary. I've made two half moulds and one that splits into quarters and I'll show you those now away from the virtual world on my camouflaged kitchen table. Okay, this is the last mold that I've printed. And it's done in four sections. And also chamfered the edge ever so slightly so I could put a wick through there because this is going to be for a candle. And these are a couple other ones that I made from a different scan where the texture is a lot more detailed, although one still has the gaffer tape on. You can only imagine what someone like Eduardo Paolozzi would have done with a 3D printer and photogrammetry. And these are a pair of semi-spent nut candles, he says with a silly grin on his face. You can see a little detail, but I guess the point with wax is they change shape and become covered in drippings with use and over time. I'll make a note here that when working with molten wax and making candles, you should make sure to only heat your wax at a low gentle temperature and to not rush. I also made sure to avoid working anywhere where other liquids were present, especially water, as if these come into contact with molten wax, this could cause an explosion. I have a very vivid memory as a child, while sitting in candlelit darkness after a power cut, my brother thought it would be a great idea to pour water onto a candle, which nearly set the kitchen on fire and set him on a path of religious devotion and a receding hairline. On that note, I'll leave this video here and you with a question, what should I scan next? Should it be a cheese? The best answer will get scanned. Or is it photogrammetricized?